when it comes to video games, we as players have been rather conditioned by one simple thing, video game objectives. Now, no matter what video game you're playing, you'll likely have a checklist of things that you needed to do in either to see things through for a main quest or indeed a side quest where you're collecting many, many, many things. But that's exactly the relationship between the game and player that some developers love to mess with. As the examples on today's list were well, their video game objectives that ended up absolutely making us look like idiots. So let's take a look at them. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video game objectives that totally trolled players. Number 10, Deal or Revenge, Grand Theft Auto 4. So ahead of Grand Theft Auto 4's final mission, players are given the option to pursue one of two narrative avenues. Take part in a heroin deal with the duplicitous Dimitri, for which you'll be paid $250,000, or stick to your, um, principles and take revenge against Dimitri for betraying you earlier on in the game. Now, while many players might assume that the happy conclusion to this story comes with you seeking revenge and finally getting justice, that's not exactly the case. In fact, neither option is good because you're kind of damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. Damn. The deal ending results in Nico's cousin Roman being killed by Dimitri in a botched hit job on Nico, while the revenge ending, where Dimitri is dead, culminates in Nico's girlfriend Kate being accidentally killed by Don Jimmy when he attempts to murder Nico. There's no good ending here, just misery and, well, more misery. Thankfully, the fact that this divided the fan base so sharply meant that in GTA V, Rockstar just kind of went, you know what, let's have an ending where just everybody lives, Hey. Number 9. Investigate the Voice Until Dawn So Until Dawn is a loving homage to horror tropes, but also one that likes to send them up in completely new and interesting ways. And just when you think you've outsmarted the game, the game then turns and looks at you and says, ha ha ha, I'm ten steps ahead, pal. For example, let's take a look at what happens with Ashley and a rather fatal surprise. In Chapter 9, while Ashley is exploring the underground passageway, players are given two options, either investigate the faint voice of what sounds like a terrified woman in the distance, or rejoin her group. Now, the smart option, you might think, is to rejoin the group, but then again, it just seems a bit too obvious to be the correct one, like the game is setting players up for an easy death, which, lest we not forget, can happen very, very quickly. Hilariously, though, players who opt to investigate the voice and follow this line of inquiry to its conclusion will end up being attacked by a Wendigo, which will leap out of a trapdoor and rip Ashley's head clean off her body. In a way, this is the utter beauty of Until Dawn. You're never quite sure what actually is the right answer, because sometimes it leans heavily into the tropes, and sometimes it doesn't. It always keeps you guessing, and for that, we should always give it a little round of applause. Number 8. Kill Yourself to Save the Human Race – Saints Row 4 Now, the Saints Row games absolutely love trolling the player, but no such better example can be found than in Saints Row 4 where you're given the opportunity to save the entire human race by killing yourself. Seems like an obvious choice, right? Well, you'd be wrong. In this mid-game mission, Zero Cool, the game's protagonist will offer two options. Either enter the blue door to rescue Matt Miller, which will, according to the villain, doom the human race to extinction, or enter the red door and save humanity, albeit at the cost of your own life. If you decide to take the red door and give humankind a chance, the game's end credits will immediately roll and achievement will pop knowingly named, you chose poorly. From there, you'll actually be able to reload from the last checkpoint and pick the other option the game actually wants you to pick in order to continue playing. So basically it's saying, <laughs> don't worry about humanity, they'll be fine. E even if they're dead, they'll be fine because they won't be worrying about it. Number 7. Mix Medicine and Alcohol – The Curse of Monkey Island Oh yes, a Monkey Island game trolling players. Who could have seen that coming? So despite your smarter instincts likely telling you it's a bad idea, roughly two-thirds of the way through The Curse of Monkey Island, players will realize that the only way to progress forward is to mix a drink of grog with the head be clear medicine in their possession. But upon doing so, you might first assume that you've just met a narrative dead end, as Guybrush immediately breaks the fourth wall to mention how foolish such an act is before seemingly dropping dead on the spot. And so at this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, oh, well, yeah, okay, I've, I've made a mistake here. That, 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 was, that was my fault for doing that. Uh, I probably shouldn't have mixed alcohol and medicine there. Look, they've even got an undertaker coming along to take my body away. Oh, look, the, the, the credits are rolling. This is, this is a very prolonged game over screen right here, isn't it? Wait, wait a minute, they're fading away and I'm getting back. You mean I was meant to do that? This is how you progress in the game? 
because now you find yourself awake in the morgue and now you're tasked with finding a way to free Guybrush from his live burial. Pretty grim, but at least we're still playing, right? Number 6. Deliver the Mysterious Box – Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic so in the legendary Knights of the Old Republic RPG, developers Bioware chose to use a side quest to mess with the insatiable curiosity that most players have. Those who complete a spice delivery for the Rodian Lur's cash will receive the offer for further employment, and upon accepting this will receive a mysterious box to deliver to Motta the Hut. Now, Lur's warns you not to open the box under any circumstances, albeit without ever explaining why not. Now, naturally, for many players, the temptation is simply too much, though if you're gonna open the box, you'll probably want to save your game first. Because here's the thing, if you open the box, you get teleported into kind of like an alternative micro-dimension where you're now held prisoner and the only way to escape is to answer riddles. And if that doesn't sound too bad enough and just like another challenge, maybe I should have mentioned one little caveat here. If you get any of the riddles wrong, your body is trapped inside this prison forever and it's a game over. Do not open the box. <laughs> Number 5. Mind Meld with Morinth – Mass Effect 2 now, no video game franchise does the rumpy pumpy quite like Mass Effect does, because even though it would be painted by the mainstream media as being gross, just alien sex and boning until kingdom come, it's not actually like that. You can actually develop true emotional feelings for your companions. I mean, Tali, my god, I chose her in every single Mass Effect. She's the perfect woman for me! But if there is one person you definitely should not be making the space beast with two backs with, it is definitely Morinth. Why is that? Well, Simon Miller, I'll tell you, it's because she'll kill you. Because you see that she's got a rare genetic disorder which causes her to kill anyone that she mates with. Furthermore, because Morinth grows stronger, smarter, and more powerful with each deadly meld, she's effectively addicted to it and will do whatever it takes to lure mates in. Players who sufficiently pursue her will even hear her proclaim that Shepard may be strong of mind enough to survive the meld, and suggest that they should probably just attempt it if they both survive the game's climactic suicide mission. But here's the thing, if you do choose to go down this route, you're gonna end up dead, my friend, because even though she promised that you were special, one of a kind, you're not. You were just another feast for her praying mantis-style thing, ripping off your head. So don't do it. Keep it in your space pants. Number 4. Collect 50 Star Bottle Caps – Fallout New Vegas Ah, Fallout New Vegas. It is at once one of the best, most well-crafted games I have ever played, but also contains some of the most infuriating moments that I have ever played through. God damn it, why am I smiling so much when I know what I'm about to talk about has caused me to literally shake my gaming controller so much in anger that the rivets fell out the back. This is the thing. The Legend of the Star, the Sunset Sarsaparilla, side quest where you have to collect 50 star marked bottle caps takes you goddamn ages. So much so that you start building in your mind that it is truly a side quest of legendary proportions because you're promised a bounty of untold rewards for collecting 50 of them and returning to a specific location. But here's the kicker my friends, when you do, you get bugger all. Because after returning to Festus, all you get is him regaling you with the story of how Sunset Sarsaparilla came to be, and to rub salt in the wound at the very end of the story, you'll get a quest failed message appearing. But wait, there's more! Cheesed off players, which is pretty much everyone at this point, can talk to Festus again and register their dissatisfaction, and he'll then tell them to head around the corner and claim the real prize that Sunset Sarsaparilla decided to include after receiving so many complaints. So at least you get something from this transaction, and to be fair, the Pew Pew, which is a lovely, deadly laser gun that you can pick off, is definitely worth it, but still, if you're not specked out in laser guns or have no sort of inclination about that, this really was a waste of your time. Number 3. Screw Everyone – Dead Rising 3 so here's the thing, when it comes to a zombie apocalypse, as much as we'd all like to think that we would be the bastion of humanity, gathering people together and looking after everyone, it's probably not gonna happen, is it? You're probably gonna turn into the most selfish asshole possible and look out for numero uno. And maybe your cats. 
And you can express this self-obsessed asshole mentality in Dead Rising 3, because at the start of the game's seventh and final chapter, players are told to meet their friends at the karaoke bar, but you're actually free instead to head directly to the escape plane and attempt a speedy exit. And when you approach the plane, an objective prompt even appears stating, screw everyone, time to leave? And if you accept this prompt and continue with your escape, player character Nick will actually be caught by his pals trying to flee, at which point they'll knock him on his ass and fly out of dodge without him, while expressing disappointment at his selfishness. And to hammer home the point that you screwed up a little bit here, pal, the game even ends with showing a bomb dropping onto the city, saying that there were no survivors, that Nick in no way, under any circumstances, managed to get out scot-free from his poor decisions. So what have we learned in this? Well, maybe we should, if we do have a plane at the ready and uh, trying to escape the zombie apocalypse, maybe take our friends with us then. Between you and me, if they're not there. Five on the dot, I'm off. <laughs> Number 2. Survive. Halo Reach. So going through Halo Reach is a rather emotional experience, and I never thought I'd say that about a Halo game, because usually you're just a big tin of beef in a very, very clunky suit of armor, and you're just shooting people in the face. It doesn't really respond very well to an emotional narrative, but here it definitely, definitely ticked that box, because as you go through with your team and lose member by member, you start realizing that you are whittling down to just you. You're going to be left alone, and that is really hammered home come the final epilogue mission style thing where your one objective is to survive. And what this does is it gives you a sense of false hope. You think that because you have been battle trained, you are battle hardened, you are the best of the best, the lone wolf survivor that you maybe, maybe will get out of this alive. But the game tricks you. You're never going to make it out in one piece. You will be overwhelmed. You will die no matter how many elites, no matter how many grunts and hunters that you take down. You are going down for the count. And it's rather sad to realize that as the endless hordes start growing and growing. You're just like, oh, I'm going to die here. And that's pretty brutal, especially when the game objective tells you to just survive. <laughs> it's like it's rubbing salt in the wound there, isn't it? And number one, kill the sadist, the evil within. So, at the very beginning of The Evil Within, Sebastian is found in a pretty horrible situation, trapped upside down and having to free himself by grabbing a nearby knife, and this is just when the horror begins. Upon getting to their feet, players will then have to deal with their first combat engagement, as the towering, reoccurring enemy known as the Sadist lurks nearby. Now, between your recent acquisition of a knife and the game teaching you to sneak, it's not actually immediately clear to all players whether they're supposed to take the Sadist on directly or go the stealth route. Well, to those that try to take the Sadist on with their knife, well, they'll soon get a very firm answer. Attempting to stab him will only result in the pissed off Sadist knocking Sebastian to the floor and then swiftly decapitating him with one blow of his giant meat cleaver. So yes, if nothing else, the game has taught you in a rather roundabout fashion that while it will give you access to weapons to defend yourself, stealth is definitely the order of the day. Otherwise, you're going to end up on the menu. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 video game objectives that completely trolled players. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice here on YouTube, where I do all of my streaming outside of work, and it would be great to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I'm going to give you one objective that you should definitely follow, and it is not a troll, I promise you, and that is simply to be kind to yourself. In this day and age, we can be way too hard on ourselves, much more so than ever needs to be, all right? So just take a break, allow yourself to rest, recuperate, treat yourself with love and respect because you do deserve it. You do deserve all of the best things in life like love, happiness, and success, and do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, all right? Now go out there and smash it. As always, I've been Jules, you have been awesome. Never forget that. I'll speak to you soon.